What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see are designed to be realistic and the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips. This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game. I just need a little bit of advice or for those who are out there who just want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year and in today's episode of who to sign for guys i am so excited for these boys as monaco of Ligue 1 in france who i am desperate for them to get their real stadium in the game next year ea if you're listening please consider adding it in because it's absolutely iconic and it looks unbelievably unique as well now monaco are a four-star team that play europa league football their starting budget is around around 30 million pounds and they are an amazing team to do a FIFA career mode with. Their objectives in the first season are tough, reach the last 16 of the cup, finish in the top three, which is Champions League places in Ligue 1, and also reach the semi-finals of the Europa League as well. So that's the toughest objective of the three, but it's a great team. Now I mentioned a moment ago, it's a four-star team, but it's on the cusp of becoming four and a half star and it's got an abundance of young talent. If you can think about Monaco over the past decade, I mean, do I need to say more? Kylian Mbappe. You know, there's, there's been some incredible talent at Monaco over the past decade, and they still are producing and developing amazing, absolutely amazing youngsters. And there are some incredible ones in this team, such as uh, Badia Shearley, uh, as well as um, as Vanderson, uh, the young Brazilian at uh, fullback as well. Sofian Diop is just unreal on this game. Starts off 78 overall, but has phenomenal potential and of course Chumani as well absolutely amazing young midfielder too it, it really is an incredible young team there are a couple of aging players in there but for the most part there's loads of players with great potential and lots of players that are starting to peak right now or approaching their peak as well now they have three players that deals are coming at the end of the year and I would sell them all those are Cesc Fabregas and Vito Minone former Arsenal players and also Gibral Sidibe as well I'd also add Pele and Aguila onto the transfer list as well. That's right, you've got Vanderson, the young Brazilian, as a good young right back. I'd sell the other two you've got. They're higher rated, but a few years older. I'd cash in on both of them in the first season. But as for new signings with Monaco, well, I would recommend strengthening first team quality with this team. And the one player I would say you cannot pass up is this guy right here. He signed for Aston Villa in real life, but in the game, you can get him for under the valuations. His contract's upcoming at the end of the year. If you've watched this series, you see me sign and half the episodes. It's Boubacar Camera of Marseille, a division rival, 21 years old, but already 80 overall. You can get him for around 20 to 22 mil, which is an absolute bargain. He starts off 80 overall, but grows to 86 with dynamic potential, can easily get into the high 80s. And what I love about Camera is he's the perfect anchor man. He can play as a DM, sit deeper, no problem. But if you want to play him centre half, he can fill in there as well. At six foot, great defensive stats and also a really solid player in general. Very versatile. However, in this Monaco side, I would have him in a hold of field role alongside Schumani and drop Fafana to the bench. He's a bargain buy. Don't let him slip through your fingers and go elsewhere. He really is one of the best bargain buys you can get in this year's FIFA career mode. Uh, we did sell Gibraltar Sidibe to Marseille though. We just signed one of their players, so they're going to sign one of ours. We sell him to £9 million as he'll go to the Velodrome there. Once again, two really solid right backs in this team, but Vanderson is a really good young talent with solid potential and already 74 overall so not much worse than the current right backs you've got here um, in Sidibe as you start to of course we sold to Marseille and also Aguilar as well but I would recommend selling and cashing in in the first season and looking to buy a new right back to replace those guys that are in their late 20s right now. You'll also see it was a bit for Pele as well, though unfortunately that deal fell through. And also I found this one really interesting indeed, Cesc Fabregas. Where was I going to sell him to? The veteran Spaniard, World Cup winner, provided the assist for, for the World Cup winner back in 2010 for Iniesta. We're going to sell him to Bournemouth. Yep, Scott Parker wants him at the Vitality Stadium. Very interesting indeed. Heading to the Championship in this save. Of course, it'll be the Premier League in real life. So he's off to Bournemouth. Vito Minone, we sold him to KRC Gank. And again, Fabregas went to the Cherries as well. So yeah, quick little sales there for the former Arsenal boys. One going back to England. One going to Belgium as well. Uh, but Aguila, uh, I would recommend selling him to, like I said, with Sidibe, they're I think at the same overall, or perhaps Aguila is one rating lower at 77. And Sidibe 78. But 
They're the same age at 28 years old. And these are two really solid starting right backs. If you want, you can just sell one and keep the other and not buy a new starting right back. Personally, I would sell them both and build for the future with Monaco. They've got such class young talent already, but it's always nice to get even more. We sold Aguila for 12.5 mil and Sidibe went. So for the combined total of the two, we raised around 20 million. And that's enough to buy a good starting right back who's younger better and has more potential as well so to me I would personally sell them both because you don't need three good right backs that are in their 20s so yeah to me I'd, I'd personally cash in all of them and then sign a new younger right back and the players I'd recommend are right here uh, Diogo Delot of Manchester United and also Serginho Dest of Barcelona the uh, young American formerly of Ajax as well now personally the two of them are quite similar uh, although I would say that Delot is probably a bit, of a bit of a better defender than Sergio Serginho Dest Dest I think to me, we better playing as a winger in whatever system he's operating in. But in this Monaco side, I would say whichever deal is better value for money, that's the one you should go for. They're around the same age, they're around the same overall, they've got around the same potential. There's not really much difference in those key stats there. But with Manchester United, uh, they accepted a valuation deal of 18 million, which will be a steal for Diogo de lot. We signed on a five-year contract and at 78 overall, 24 years old, he's got 84 potential, so grows six ratings. He'll be a starting right back in this team with Vanderson four ratings lower but a couple years younger coming off the bench he's a really solid starting right back and again to me it just makes sense selling Sidibe and Aguila we raised more money I think it was two million extra than what we paid on the lot and we got a better player and a younger player and still Vanderson is here off the bench as well to me it makes sense selling them both and bringing in a young talent like the lot or Serginho Dest uh, the final two signs I picked up with a little bit of money remaining were a new centre back now they have some great young center halves Monaco really good players such as uh, Badia Chile for example but I would recommend a new start in this team because you'll notice their defense is the weakest area of the team based on rating alone and I think this guy's a really good pickup a couple of players I'd recommend are Jason Denea of Leon and also Chance and Mbemba of Porto in this save and uh, Denea had moved on I believe but Mbemba is available on a cut price deal because his deals are coming at the end of the year he's 79 rated but you can get him for under the valuation and he really really is a solid pickup in this year's FIFA career. He starts off 79 overall, 26 years old, which means he's in the peak of his career right now. Medium high work rates, really strong, great base defensive stats, and he also grows free ratings to 82 overall. That's his potential. So yeah, in this Monaco team, he'll slide right into the first 11, and being 26 years old means he's not going to get any worse for at least another five, six years. So he's a great player for the youngster to learn under, to gain, uh, to gain mentorship from, and then develop and play alongside member as the years go by. So the final signing I made after Pele was sold was a new third choice strike. You'll notice with AS Monaco, Kevin Volland sitting deeper in the CAM slash CF role. Ben Yedder is wearing the armband and your starting striker in this team. And of course on the bench as well. You've got a decent young forward, but what you don't have right now is much depth in that position. I would recommend bringing in a young French talent, and this is one of the best you can get in the game. It is Cho, who is just such an awesome young player. He's starting overall is 71, but this kid is just 17 years old. He is a teenage talent right now, playing for Angers, and I couldn't recommend him higher. Really, really solid player with 85 potential. Yeah, he grows 14 ratings. So you know in the first season, and Ben Yedder's going to be your starting strike. You've got Kevin Volland right behind. You've got a couple of good youngsters in Pellegrini and Guabel's out on loan right now. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, Boadu has just been signed for this year as well. Great young Dutch striker. But to have a third choice there in the reserves in Cho, really solid option, I would say, for the future and worth bringing in for the first season. So, as you'll see in the first season with Monaco, we sold five players for 25 and three quarter million, signed four players for 57.4 mil, a net loss of around 30. 31 and a half million total with young talent coming in here. Camera going straight into the first 11 as an anchor man, and Bemba going straight into the first 11 as a centre half. The lot going straight into the first 11 as a right back, and now you've got Cho as a youngster with high potential to watch out for in the future as well. We made this Monaco side younger, we replaced some of the aging Deadwood players, and we made the first team stronger as well. Really good business, I would say, in the summer window. This is such a fun team to use, man, seriously. So, as per usual, we'd simulate the end of the season and see if we can get those really Really tough objectives and as you can see well, coming to the end of the Ligue 1 season, I felt confident we'd finished in the top three, which is a Champions League place, and we did so as well. We finished runners-up in the year with 79 points, and we were a whopping 
17 points behind Paris Saint-Germain. But let's be totally honest here. PSG are the most dominant side in French football. They're going to win Ligue 1 every single year. It will take you a while before you can challenge them. In the first season, it's not your job to topple Paris Saint-Germain and end their dominance. Monaco did that a few years ago. Brilliant season uh, to defy PSG. But in the first season, PSG are going to win it. I know the season before last, again, Lille were champions as well. But for the most part, PSG tend to win the league year after year. The first season isn't about ending their streak. It's about securing Champions League football. We did that with a second place finish. That's more than good enough for the board but unfortunately the reason my manager rating was quite low is because the cup and European objectives were both failures we were knocked out one round fewer than we were asked to get to in the cup and as for the Europa League asked to get to the quarterfinals we were knocked out by Unai Emery's side in the preliminary round so yeah one round fewer in the cup and two rounds fewer in Europe not great seasons there but overall I would still call it a decent first season not a great one but not a terrible one either the most important thing in the first season once again is remembering this is an RTG. It's a long-term project. You're not supposed to topple PSG in the first season. You're not supposed to win the Europa League. It really is just all about replacing those aging Deadwood players like Cesc Fabregas and Vito Minone, for example, bringing in good young talent, strengthening the back line like we did with the signings of Chancellor and Bemba and Diogo Delot and Bemba, for example, going free ratings to 82 overall and also getting some good younger players that can be starters in the first season and will be starters for all the years. You're with Monaco as well. That's exactly what we did here with the signs we made of Mbemba, Delot, and Camera in particular. Monaco, though, amazing team to do a FIFA career mode with. You know it's going to be an RTG, firstly to topple PSG for dominance in French football, and then to start picking up European honours as well. But they're an amazing team to use. They've got fantastic starting young talent here already, such as the likes of Sofi and Jop and Chouamani as well. Really, really good young players. A reasonable starting budget as well. The only negative of Monaco is there's no real stadium, which is so, so gutting because I'm sure you've seen it. It's a beautiful, unique, iconic ground in a fabulous location as well. If you can put up with that, you've got three beautiful kits as well. Absolutely glorious. Great team to use. And I definitely recommend them for a rebuild and an RTG. But that will end today's episode. Off you to sign for, guys. Big fan of you watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For very soon.